Budman. Hey, Budman. What are the pros? Budman. <laughs> what are the pros and cons of running Ubuntu on a 64-bit machine? And he says this is a great show. I think he's he's a very smart person. It is, it is. <laughs> the pros of running Ubuntu on a 64-bit Six, machine. On a 64-bit machine. It's awesome. <laughs> I I have to make the assumption that you're actually asking what would be the advantage of running the 64-bit Ubuntu on a 64-bit machine. I have to make that assumption because there's really no advantage to running... I mean, obviously, your, your processor, if it supports 64-bit, is going to be a better processor than... Uh, but that, that aside. Hmm. Your question is probably running the 64-bit version of Linux on a 64-bit platform. So the advantages there is basically you're going to be able to fully utilize your RAM on the system if you've got like four gigs or more of RAM. Linux is interesting with PAE because you can still support higher uh, levels of RAM if your, or sizes, capacities of RAM, if your processor supports uh, PAE. But, and, and we talked to a, a viewer had posted an email about that a couple weeks ago. Uh, you can look it up. Wikipedia is a great place to look up uh, PAE and find out a little bit of information about that. Mm -hmm. um, but with 64-bit platforms, you don't need to use that. You don't have to, you can actually access as much RAM as your system can handle, so uh, there's really no, no problem there. 64-bit uh, architecture is technically going to be faster. These days, uh, still, a lot of the code is 32-bit on your 64-bit uh, operating system, so you don't get the full benefits. So it's been basically converted over to 64-bit so that it works, but it's still a 32-bit uh, program. But if you get into uh, applications that support true native 64-bit code, then you're looking at you know screaming fast uh, processing of those applications. So, so the advantages are pretty good. Uh, the disadvantages, really, when it comes to Linux these days, is that uh, unfortunately Flash tends to have the most problems of anything when it comes to 64-bit versions of Flash. But that's not Linux's fault. That's that's kind of like the Adobe guys. So. So that's what most people run into. If you don't use Flash a lot, or if you don't mind having to tinker with it sometimes, um, sometimes it means closing your browser and reopening it, and that's as simple as it is. John Robert mentioning uh, Skype with webcams. I've never personally had a problem with that, but I've heard that some people have trouble getting those things to work under uh, under 64-bit. So usually it's a compatibility thing. This is what you know. This is what I would say. So you get the speed benefits of 64-bit. You get the extra RAM. Uh, the ability to use your RAM natively and, and truly, but there are sometimes some downsides with, uh, with compatibility with certain applications. But that said, things are progressing substantially. I mean, things. Are, everybody in the chat room who's using 64-bit can agree with me that in the past, let's say, three years, it's been huge for 64-bit. Uh, just the transition has just been, you know, has really been there. Um, Zabata says, does 64-bit really kick in enough if you're not running games, though? Yeah. I notice a difference on my desktop system. I've got a Quad 6600, which is just kind of like an entry-level quad-core Intel processor. Mm. Um, and I notice a difference in 64-bit with mm. Ubuntu. And I don't do any gaming, really. Mm. So I don't think it's necessarily a gaming thing. It's just like it's, it's the way your kernel runs. It's the way that the software runs on the kernel. But these days, I mean, we're, we're slipping into, and we've been, I guess, over the past couple of years, where we're getting into the place where processors are fast as it is. It doesn't, you know, what you're running is almost, you know, even if it's slow by the standards of what's fast, it's still running pretty fast. 